what are the red flags that people should look out for in relationships? Hmm. I, th- I think people who can't take responsibility is a pretty difficult one to live with. If someone can't say sorry, they, if they don't have that kind of humility, that's, a, that's a, one of the more damning ones, I think. Because it's hard for, if you can't take accountability, if you don't have the humility to look at yourself and apologize, you also can't really grow. It's why, you know, one of the classic kind of hallmarks of narcissists is incompetence. Because if you can't, if you can't take responsibility for something, you can't get better. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you just keep making the same mistakes over and over again and it's everyone else's fault and it's the the world's fault. And so you, you essentially maintain that incompetence. And, um, and so someone who can't say sorry or someone who can't take responsibility in a relationship, that's a really difficult thing to work with. Um, that goes hand in hand with like someone who talks badly about multiple kind of exes and it's just always everyone else's fault. Like it's, if, if you've got a string of people that you've dated that you just keep saying how awful they all were, it's like there's something going on there because you can't... You're the only common denominator between all of these different relationships. Yeah. So I, I, that one I struggle with too. Um, not, keeping, not keeping promises, I think, is a pretty big one. It's, you know, I think that's a big red flag. That's like a big red flag for staff and for, uh, and for people that you date. Because it, when you no longer trust that someone's going to do what they say they're going to do, it, it really breaks something in a relationship. Because now that you don't trust that they're going to do something, you, t- you turn into a version of yourself you don't like with that person. Like the historically, the people that have ever worked for me that I micromanage the most are the ones that I don't think are going to actually get it done. Well, it's that vigilance again. It's the night hyper vigilance. Exactly. If I th- if someone proves that they just if they say they're going to do it next when by next Wednesday, they deliver it by next Wednesday. I actually don't bother them at all. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm I'm like I have fully hands off the wheel. I'll see you next Wednesday. But when someone doesn't do it by next Wednesday and then they don't even bring it up and I'm like, wait, you said you were going to do this thing today. I'm the one who has to bring it up. And they're like, oh yeah, well, there's this thing. It's like, now I don't trust that you're going to do it. And I don't even trust that you're going to acknowledge it if you don't do it. So in, in, for me in dating and relationships, if someone consistently, we're all capable of breaking promises. Don't get me wrong. Like we all over promise sometimes or we try and take too many things on and anyone's capable of that. But if someone consistently doesn't honor their word with you in big and small ways, that to me would be a big red flag. Cause it just, I can't, those, those things, uh, to me, there's like just fundamentals of a relationship. Can someone take accountability? Do they deliver what they say they're going to do? Like these things are the, like without those, you don't really have anything. If you, if someone does, if you don't trust someone to do what they say they're going to do, and if when they don't do what they say they're going to do, or they fall beneath a standard, they can't apologize, then you, you have a fundamentally broken dynamic that no amount of love is really going to make, it won't overcome it to be able to make you happy. You're not playing by the same rules in life. And, and when in any relationship, you're not playing by the same rules. If you and I have a friendship and I wrong you and I apologize, it's not the end of the world that I wronged you. You might go, I can live with it. And you've apologized. We're playing by the same rules. You did something wrong. You get it. You've apologized. We're both living in the same universe. But if I do something wrong and you call me out on it and I say, I didn't do anything wrong. In fact, what happened was you, like, (laughs) now it's like, oh, we're not even playing the same sport. We're not playing by the same rules. This is, we're operating in different realities here. The, The danger of any relationship is that you think we equate proximity and closeness to a, a shared experience and a shared moral 
and emotional world. And they're not the same things. You can share the same bit of carpet with someone for years and think that you're on the same page about things. And then the, when something goes wrong, that person is like, you realize you're, you're with an alien. That person, you, you know, I, I get stories of people who get sick and their partners not, like, can't be asked to take them to the hospital. And you go, oh, these are two people that like sh she or he thought they occupied the same emotional space, but they're on, they're on different planets. It just felt like they were close because they lived together, because they'd been together for so long, because, you know, it's like the, the, you know, and even it, in any bad relationship, you're always going to be able to point to great moments. Like it, and those great moments really confuse us, but it is the equivalent of a broken what being right twice a day. You don't, you wouldn't say it's a great, that's a great device for telling the time. Just because twice a day it was like, oh, it's right. But that's what people do with love. It's like twice a day, it feels good and it feels right. And then they go, oh, it must be important, but broken. In other news, this episode is brought to you by Element. Stop having coffee first thing in the morning. Your adenosine system that caffeine acts on isn't even active for the first 90 minutes of the day, but your adrenal system is. And salt acts on your adrenal system. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium that helps to curb cravings, regulate your appetite, and improve your brain function. There's a reason that I continue harping on about Element. It's a product I've used for over three years. Every single morning that I wake up, whether I'm on the road or at home, I start my day by having one of these in water because it really does help. It tastes phenomenal. It's got no sugar in it, no gluten, no fillers, no other artificial junk or BS, and it really makes me feel fantastic. Best of all, there's a no BS, no questions asked refund policy with an unlimited duration, so you can buy it right now, completely risk-free, and if you do not like it for any reason, they will give you your money back, and you don't even need to return the box. That's how confident they are that you'll love it. Right now, you can get a free sample pack of all eight flavors by going to the link in the description below or heading to drinklmnt.com slash modernwisdom. That's drinklmnt.com slash modernwisdom. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip, you can watch the full episode right here by pressing right here. <laughs>